In my continued exploration of Unreal Engine 5 and its applications to ArcViz, I wanted to take on a challenge. So I'm gonna take my scene, my forest scene, my cabin scene from my 3D environments course, and I'm gonna try and recreate it in under an hour in Unreal Engine 5. So there's some certain rules of engagement here. I need to use UE5 and create the environment from scratch. I need to use the existing V-Ray cabin and bring it into UE5 via Datasmith. So I'm not recreating a cabin and making a whole new model of the building. But I am testing out Datasmith and how well it translates V-Ray into Unreal Engine. I'm going to use whatever lighting, rendering, environment effects needed in UE5 to try and recreate the same look and feel that I created with my V-Ray scene. And I need to complete the project in under an hour. FYI, if you wanna check this project out in a V-Ray setting, a course showing how I created this entire scene. If you wanna check out that course, I'm gonna put it on sale in connection with the release of this video. So if you want to check out the 3ds Max V-Ray version of how this project was created, this forest scene, all about 3D environments and how to create them using Forest Pack and Mega Scans and various different tools. If you want to check that out, follow the links in the description to my 3D environments course. I'm putting it on sale with the release of this video for a limited time. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, so what do you think? Do you think this is possible? Have any of you tried something similar? Give me a like if you think I can do it, and if you think I'm gonna fail miserably, don't do anything. And definitely don't subscribe to this channel. <laughs> no, but seriously, give me a like, subscribe, lots more content coming like this that I think you all enjoy. So let's get into it, and I want you to stay to the end and see what kind of results we get, and then let me know what you think of the results, let me know what you think of the process, let me know what you think of Unreal Engine 5 as an ArcViz tool. Okay, I've got lots of thoughts, I'll share them with you. I want to hear from you. Okay, let's go. Okay, so obviously I'm just going to start out with a blank architectural scene. It's got lighting, it's got a camera, it has the sun and sky system all set up. And I'm just starting with basic landscape, creating a landscape grid and then using the landscape's tools to start painting in topography, basically. And I'm loosely trying to match what I had in my V-Ray scene, which was the cabin sitting up on a hill and the camera downhill a little bit from it. Then, of course, we're just using assets from the Megascans library, the Quixel library to add some texture to the forest floor. And of course, in the V-Ray scene, in the first place, I was also using Megascans. One thing I realized early on in this process, and I should definitely note here, is that I have a lot of different renderings of this forest scene. So it's not like I'm trying to recreate an exact photo or an exact replica of one of the renderings I generated from my forest scene. I'm trying to create, I'm trying to reimagine the forest scene as if I had started it in Unreal and not in 3ds Max. Tell a similar story using a totally different tool. So now I'm gonna get into adding foliage to the forest floor because that texture tiles a lot. We need to hide it with a bunch of other stuff. And of course, forest floor is gonna have a ton of things on it. So I'm just grabbing foliage again from the Quixel library and using the foliage tools to paint them in in Unreal Engine 5. This is actually one thing I really love about Unreal Engine 5. The foliage tools are super handy and very easy to use and you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, power to control how you want your foliage to look. 
And of course, the Quixel library is huge because we can just grab stuff, all sorts of different ground covers and things like that to really just fill in that forest floor to make it look realistic. So you can see we're just gonna add a bunch of different variations and just fill it in till it's thick. That way we get a lot of layers, and I talked about this in my environments course with the V-Ray version of this too, but you're just building layer upon layer of detail like a forest floor would have. So you can put pine needles on the ground, you can put the, the fantastic scan textures on the, on the ground, you can put all these different foliage things, then you can start putting tree fall and stuff like that, pine cones, branches, all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do all that stuff. Okay, so here we are adding more stuff to the forest floor. Again, Quixel Mega Scans, we're getting the, the twigs and the logs and all that kind of stuff. It all just adds that extra element of realism and detail. And then we can go into the bigger things like the stones. And you can see these, these scan stones are awesome, photo scan stones. You can bring in whichever version of them you want from low quality to high quality and that will change how much how many polygons it has but also how it renders but you got to keep in mind that it can bog down your scene if it's totally crazy okay so i'm just placing these in as as larger elements of the landscape and again i used this in the v-ray version too the same kind of stuff i don't know if it's the exact same assets but i mean it was all quixel mega scan stuff so and i would say that using it in Unreal Engine is much, much simpler than it is using it in 3ds Max plus V-Ray because, of course, it's all real-time. So you just saw I was grabbing some more Quixel assets, this time downloading the package of Megascan's trees and then popping those in here. They're not exactly the same kind of tree I was using in V-Ray, but that's okay. We're not creating an exact replica. And these trees are great. They come in, they have, they have animation built into them, and they uh, render fantastic. The bark is, is all like photo scan looking material. Everything is extremely real. The leaves are photo scanned and they just work. So this is great. So I'm placing these all individually but later you'll see that I also add them to the foliage and start using the foliage tools to spread them around to create my entire forest. And that is starting now. So you gotta get your foliage settings right. So when you start painting, everything works properly. To me, I really like this because, I mean, you can actually go in later and change your settings and then repaint over the forest and it will update the trees. So you saw how all my trees are kind of looking the same size. You can change all that later. And then we can start messing with the atmospherics to try and match. Once we've got our forest, we need to add some, you know, adjust the fog, because that was a big element of the V-Ray renderings. I have to say I haven't really f mastered the fog for Unreal Engine 5 and how to get it to look like I had in V-Ray. Next step is bringing in the cabin. So this is in 3ds Max, and of course I have the Datasmith plugin installed for 3ds Max, and I can just export directly to Datasmith and then come into Unreal Engine 5 and import it directly in. In the end, I did not import the lights from 3ds Max because I kept the lighting setup much more simple and I just did it in Unreal Engine 5. But you can see that the materials and the model come in very nicely, very easily. I mean, it just translates. Datasmith is really cool because it translates all your V-Ray materials into something, well, it turns it into an Unreal Engine 5 material, which is constructed completely different, but it translates it all. Okay, so you can see, you can go in and look at the node-based materials in Unreal Engine 5, and they've got some, some node that is interpreting everything that you did in V-Ray. It's pretty slick. So here I'm adjusting the landscape so that it does not interfere with the cabin. And you can see that the trees update as I paint.
So just adding a few more trees here, making the forest a little more dense, adjusting the lighting so that it comes through the trees a little bit. Really here I'm just finishing up the camera view, finding what I want. Got the inside of the cabin looking nice. When I go inside, there's some nice views inside there too. Running out of time. But I'm setting up the cameras, playing with depth of field. You can see running the path tracer to see what kind of lighting results we can get there, which I think is super nice. But even without the path tracer, it looks really nice. There were a few materials inside that I needed to fix. Easy thing to do with Quixel Mega Scans. I was going to go back and try and see why it got messed up, but then I thought, well, Mega Scans has better materials anyway. I'm just going to pop it on here. That's so nice to be able to do that. Again, the path tracer. Path tracer really is just doing really nice global illumination, just like you would do in V-Ray. Super nice feature to have that. Okay, and then we're just getting down to the last little bit, snapping some high screen, high resolution screenshots. And that's about it. These are my results after about an hour. Could do a lot more, could do better probably, but in an hour, this is what we get. Okay, after experiencing all the pros and cons of doing a project this way, I've got a lot of thoughts, as usual. So let's go through them. Okay, first of all, I think UE5 is an absolutely amazing tool. I think it is extremely capable of telling very compelling stories about your project and your design. And that is the point of ArcViz. Okay, but it's not necessarily the same thing that we would be used to as ArcViz artists with something like V-Ray. It is not necessarily about perfect photorealism. Again, it's about telling a story and being able to walk through a fully rendered scene in real time and even in interact with it if you really know what you're doing. That is a very powerful tool. It is a great storytelling tool. Okay, one thing to keep in mind with UE5 though for sure is that the learning curve is large. Okay, this is not a simple drag and drop type of program. And that's because it's extremely powerful. Like I've said, Powerful programs require a much larger learning curve, but you will rarely be limited by the program on what you're able to accomplish. That is the benefit. So if we want to do really high-end projects with really complex things going on, a complex design or just complex storytelling, UE5 might be the right tool for us. In UE5, there are always multiple ways to address the same thing because of different platforms and different different optimizations that you might want to do. This creates complexity and confusion sometimes for me, but it's because the, the program is so powerful. Okay, so for me, I think that UE5 might require us as ArcViz artists to rethink the way that we tell the story of our design or communicate our design or present our design. Again, it isn't necessarily about photorealism and taking a perfect photograph, but it is about communicating our design well. So it might not be the right solution for every project, but I think it is very compelling and intriguing as a tool. So I wanna know what you guys think. How does UE5 fit into your workflow? Do you prefer V-Ray type still shots or even animations? Or do you prefer being able to walk through your project in real time with something with a tool like Unreal Engine? What do you think of my results? What do you think of my workflow? that I just demonstrated. How do you see how do you see the future of ArcViz? Do you see us moving more in a direction like this Unreal Engine 5 stuff? 
or do you think V-Ray will continue to be the tool of choice for many, many 3D artists? Let me know in the comments. And please, if you find this information useful, give me a like and subscribe if you want more content like this, which is coming soon. Thanks a lot for watching.